Welcome, my math friends. Here we are, we're finally in section 3.3, 3.2, I don't know which one it is. It's about quadratics, parabolas, um, and I want to show you a couple problems to get you started. Problem number seven, it's asking us to solve this quadratic equation. Quadratic, why do we say that? Because it's got an x squared, that's your highest term, we call those quadratics. So, in the book, they've chunked this for us, so they're going to give us like eight or nine problems to solve and they're going to tell you use factorization to do it and they're going to give you another section where they're going to say use complete and square. Now eventually you want to get to the point where you can look at the problem and to figure out whether you can solve it factoring which is generally the easiest way to do it, it's very clean or if you have to do complete the square it gets a little messier. We'll do them both. But I want to add one thing, I want you to not only factor it and find the solution, solve for x, but I also want you to graph it because I want you to realize that solving for x is, a, is just a, um, you're doing it so that it has a meaning behind it. It's the point where the, the two points or one point or whatever, where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So understand that it's not just about solving the problem, but it's also allowing you to picture what that solution means. And that's going to come in handy to understand that. So let's just first crank out the solution. So you've got this you want to do is make everything equal to zero. So you want to bring everything over to one side and have zero on the other. So I'll bring the 3x and I'll bring the 10, right? So I bring them over as negative. Now, since the book told us this is factorable, we could do our little diamond method, however you want to do it. I'm just going to do it real quick. The way I learned a long time ago, um, I set up my two parentheses, I look at the, at the negative 10, ooh, that's supposed to be zero. I look at the negative 10 and I think what factors of negative 10 are going to get me to 3? So if factors of 10, 5 times 2, right? Put the negative with the 5, positive with the 2, <clears throat> that'll get me back to negative 10. The negative 5 will dominate over the positive 2, that should get me to negative 3. Hopefully you're good with that, or if that went too fast, just do it yourself using your diamond method, however you want to do it. Now, this is the part that we're not used to doing this year. You probably did this last year. It says equal to zero. So we're not done just to find the factors. We want to actually do something with those factors. So what does that mean? So you want to think of this. If either one of these parentheses becomes zero, since they're being multiplied by each other, it'll automatically make the other one zero. So there's two solutions since I have two parentheses. So you can solve them separately. I'm just going to write it out. For some of you, you'll be like, you see this instantly. First, x minus 5. Set that equal to 0. So if x minus 5 equals 0, x equals 5. And if you just think about it for a minute, isn't that obvious? If I put in 5 for x, 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 times anything. In this case, if I put in 5 for x, this would be 7. But 0 times 7 is still 0. So that works. That's a solution. And the same thing for the other side. The parentheses, x is 2. So there's two answers. x is 5 and x is 2. So at some level, you're done. But in your mind, you're like, well, what does that even mean? There's two answers. Well, let's think about the graph. When you graph it, then you start to understand. And Zach's doing it. He's miming it now in the air. So that's where the parabola is going to cross the axis, the x-axis. Oh, thank you, Zach. Negative 2, right? Yeah, negative 2 <laughs> plus 2. That makes better sense. So that's the second part. We're going to do this, even though it doesn't say in the book, do this anyways. Graph it. Draw it out. And you know there's an answer at negative 2. There's a point right there and at 5. And think about what this means. What we're saying is when x is negative 2, y is 0. It's like f of x equals... And when x is 5, y is 0. So I know my graph is here, here. Looking at the, um, at the leading coefficient of an even number polynomial tells me that this is going to go up on both sides. So I know it's a parabola. It's going to go up. It's going to go up and up. And so now the trick is, what's the lowest point? What's the vertex? And since it's in general form right here, I think we call it general form, you can't determine the vertex just by looking at it. If you do other methods, we could, we could bring it to, that, to the vertex form.
but we also know, maybe you remember this handy little negative b over 2a. That will tell you the vertex, the x value of the vertex. x is negative b over 2a. I should say the vertex of x is negative b over 2a. So in this problem, negative b, b is negative 3. So it's going to be a negative, negative 3. A is 1, 2, 1. So it's going to be equal to 3 halves. That's my x. So that's 1 and a half. That's right here. Now, what's your corresponding y value? Well, you've got to stick that back in to the original problem. So that's going to be 3 halves squared minus 3 times 3 halves minus 10. So 3 half squared is going to be 9 fourths minus 9 halves minus 10. And now putting everything with a common denominator of 4. So this is going to become 18 fourths and this of course will become 40 over 4. I think that's right. So the n positive 9 and the negative 18 is going to be negative 9 and negative 40 will be negative 49 fourths. <laughs> wow. Which is approximately, what, uh, 50 divided by 4 is about 12. It's a little bit more than 12. So at this point, we're going to just sketch it. So I've got my x value. I'm going to go way down to about a little bit down more negative 12. And that's my vertex. And what you want to do to cover your butt is even if you didn't graph it great, you just label the point. And then you just say, hey, I know I didn't, my graph doesn't look perfect, but I know the point is, and you'd say, 3 halves and negative 49 fourths. And if you're not getting something that's close to that, like when you're doing it, that's a clue you're making some kind of mistake. So that's the complete problem. When you start with a quadratic, you find the roots. That's what we call the roots when you set equal to zero. Those are the answers. That's where it crossed the x-axis. And then you found the vertex. All that in one. Long little problem. Uh, but you'll get the hang of doing these. Now, just something to think about. Could you have a parabola look like this? Of course, the answer is yes. And if it looks like this, it never crossed the x-axis. So is it going to have any solutions? And the answer you'll find out is no, it's not. It's not going to have any real solutions. It's going to have imaginary solutions. Um, but more on that later. But for these few problems in the beginning, just start to get the hang of this, doing all um, the factorization and then graphing. Good luck and namaste.